And the little green light, there we go. One more, once more with feeling. Good morning. Please continue to keep Pastor Leslie in prayer as she is out of town this week, attending the funeral of her grandfather. Um, the only other announcement I will make before we begin is that today is the last day to bring outreach collection, nursing home activity supplies. So if you have anything, in your car, run, get it right after the service, because this is your last shot. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the service with the prelude. Thank you. 
welcome to worship those who are joining us in our sanctuary and those who are joining us online through Facebook. Be sure by the offering to fill out your hymn lotto slips or if you're on Facebook, type your requests in the chat and please include the hymn number so that Morgan has time to look it up and figure out if it's something she's ever seen before. I invite us now to rise in body and in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundary, boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's join together singing our gathering song, Friend of God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward. Accept that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The child Isaac grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us sing Psalm 86 verses one through 10 and 16 through 17 responsibly by verse as translated in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Come. 
come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Please stand in body or spirit for the gospel affirmation. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. I hear some children, and I invite them to come forward for a story. The entertaining part will be watching me sit down and try to get back up. I used to have knees, I miss them. Hi, good morning, how is everybody this morning? Excellent, thumbs up. That's all right, ooh, save your shoe, we won't start without you. Okay. 
Jesus enjoyed teaching and healing. People everywhere heard that Jesus was a healer. They brought their sick family and friends to Jesus so he could heal them. When Jesus was near sick people, he could have gotten sick too. Have you ever heard contagious? Have you ever heard your mom say such that's contagious, don't get near? That's what that means. If you're near somebody who's sick, sometimes you can get sick too. But Jesus didn't get sick. Instead, Jesus healed the people. He went out of his way to help. Early one morning, Jesus went to his friend Simon Peter's house. Simon Peter was very upset. Jesus, my wife's mother has a terrible fever. I know you have healed people in many places. Would you please heal her too? Jesus could feel how bad his friend felt. He knelt down next to the woman, held her hand and healed her. Jesus and his friends kept going from town to town, healing others and teaching people God's love. If you could bring someone to Jesus to be healed, is there anyone you would bring? Do you know anybody who's sick? Yeah, most, most of us unfortunately know people who are sick and sometimes they'll get better and sometimes they won't get better. But the truth is, as much as we want to, we can't heal them because we're not Jesus. I did, I looked this up, I checked. Yeah, turns out, it turns out we're not Jesus. I, I was kind of surprised too. But what can we do for people who are sick? Help, how can we help them? Yes. By taking care of them, giving them their medicine. What else can we do? Yeah, we can pray for them. So before we go back to our seats, let's say a prayer for people who are sick. <clears throat> Will you pray after me, please? Dear God, please help people who are sick. Let them feel the touch of your love through the people around them. We love you, God. Amen. Thanks for coming up. It's just my cross to bear. How many times have you heard that? Once or twice. This little phrase has become so much a part of our vocabulary that it rates an entry in the American Dictionary of Idioms, My Cross to Bear. It's the title of a 2012 TV movie about a struggling single mother. It's a song whose video can be seen on YouTube. Greg Allman used it as the name of his memoir. It's just my cross to bear. What does that mean? How does that translate? I've got this big, heavy burden in my life, but I just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other to be a good Christian. Usually this is said with a weary, patient smile, as if we're just waiting for the halo to land on our heads. And we mean well, we do. And no doubt we would cite today's gospel lesson as an inspiration for having a cross to bear. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. There's that cross to bear, but let's unpack that a minute. Let's look at what Jesus means, what it, what it means for Jesus when he takes up his cross. There is no doubt that Jesus did in fact take up his cross. The vivid imagery of the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows is central to
to our belief narrative. We've all seen films and television programs that have reenacted that walk, already whipped, bloody, scourged within an inch of his life, barefooted on that dusty gravel incline. Jesus has an enormous cross laid on him. In some images, he has just the crossbar lashed across his shoulders. In others, he has shouldered the upright. In some cases, it's the whole cross all together. The picture is unmistakable. And the versions of this walk in the scriptures and the images that the movies and TV have shown us are unforgettable. Weak and exhausted and bloody, Jesus stumbles. He lands on one knee, he falls, he has to be helped to his feet by a sympathetic bystander, Simon of Cyrene. It's a cross to bear, all right. A few years ago, okay, 10 years ago, back when I had these, I participated in a tech weekend at a camp outside Shelby, North Carolina. Tech stands for Teens Encounter Christ, and it's been described as a youth version of the Via de Cristo weekends. I took part so that I could become familiar with the weekend to recommend it to the church's youth. So on the second evening after a worship service in the chapel, we lined up and took turns having a cross laid on our shoulders. This was full sized. This was like a couple of telephone poles lashed together kind of cross. Crucifix size, and I staggered just having it placed on my right shoulder. I managed to walk for what seemed like miles, but turned out to be only a few yards. The thing was so enormously heavy, I could hardly move. It wasn't until after I stopped to give my place to the next person that I discovered that one of the counselors had been behind me bearing a good portion of the weight of the cross himself. The burden I thought I was carrying all by myself, in truth, I hadn't been carrying that cross alone at all. So that's one of the messages that I hear in today's gospel lesson. There's a lot of difficult language here, a lot of words about division. But to me, that clouds the heart of the text. When we respond to Jesus' invitation to take up our cross and follow him, we will not bear the weight of that cross alone. We will not bear that weight alone. Today's lesson reveals another message as well. And this message really strikes at the heart of the idea that we all have our cross to bear. Now that phrase and the way we, that we use it tends to suggest that whatever cross we may be bearing, it's entirely of our own making, and it concerns just ourselves. It's entirely inwardly focused, in other words. It's self-centered. And that's where the idea of all of us having a cross to bear really parts ways with the cross of Jesus and where today's lesson invites us into exploring what it means to bear the cross and how you and I do that. In addition to being phenomenally heavy, the cross that Jesus bore, the cross on which he died was not his cross. It was the cross of Rome. It was the cross of trumped up charges. It was the cross representing not Jesus's burdens and problems and sin, but ours. Jesus had no burdens and problems and sins to carry. He was carrying ours. Jesus had a cross to bear, all right, and it was enormously heavy and it was made up of all our sins, all the ways that you and I fall short all the times we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And he takes that cross up for our sakes because he loves us. When Jesus takes up that cross for him, it means loving others and putting that love into action. What might happen within you and me? If instead of focusing on images of division and discord, we think about the crosses that everyone must be bearing. 
Yes, even people we can't stand, even people who believe differently, even people who don't agree that Bluebell is the best brand of ice cream. And then we think about how we can help bear their burdens. Because the cross that we take up when we aspire to follow Jesus is the reverse of the inwardly focused, self-centered, I've got my cross to bear. When we take up the cross to follow Jesus, we're taking up the crosses of our brothers and sisters. We are each standing behind someone or several someones helping with that weight. We can, as Paul tells us in Galatians, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Elsewhere in Paul, in his letter to the Romans, the brothers and sisters he never got to meet, he underlines and expands on the idea, let love be genuine, he writes, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are, especially on the internet. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, and here's the crucial phrase, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. We cannot be responsible for others who sow division, but we can elect to live peaceably with them and remember that they also are bearing burdens. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals upon their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, that's a wonderfully clear roadmap of what it looks like when you and I respond to Jesus' invitation. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Buried and often overlooked in a gospel passage that screams about division is a reminder that no one is greater than anyone else that not even a sparrow can collapse outside of God's notice. That loving our neighbors has always been a revolutionary notion. But most of all, that this revolutionary notion may be the only thing holding the church together. This charge from Jesus invites us to align our beliefs and the path upon which we walk and make our lives. It's a reminder that speaking the words, Jesus is the Messiah, the only son of the living God, requires only an effort of the mind. But living those words, that's a gift from God. Let love be genuine. Hold fast to what is good. And take up the cross, not for our sakes, but for his. Amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn of the day.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. You entice your church to speak truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plants and animal habitats.
threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources. God in your mercy. <clears throat> Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experience conflict or crisis, especially those we now name aloud or silently. Wow. Toward the efforts of those who saw chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, you have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle, especially those names listed on our prayer list and those we name aloud or silently. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All who have died with Christ also live with him. We give thanks for all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy. Our Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another, and let us also turn in our hymn lotto slips or make our choices online on Facebook. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> I'd like to thank you all for supporting the mission of the church as you are able. Um, electronic donations can also be made and that um, link can be found online and in our bulletin. I'm going to now offer our offering prayer. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and upon this meal, as grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. All people are called to God's table. Come and eat what is good. For those of you who will be communing from your homes or from your pews, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
strengthen and preserve you in everlasting life. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both now and unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. May the God who calls you across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep and sustain you now and unto the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Again, Pastor Leslie will be out of the office through June 26th for her grandfather's funeral. If you have a pastoral emergency, please contact the church office or Bob Masters to be connected with an on-call pastor. And again, today is the last day for collecting those home activity supplies. Change your calendars. There will be no Monday Bible study tomorrow, so don't show up for it. And there will also be no Wednesday potluck and Bible study on Wednesday. So do not come here expecting dinner because you will have to get your own. There will be a special congregational meeting on Sunday, July the 9th, after worship at approximately 11 o'clock, following our regularly scheduled worship service, we will gather both in person and on Zoom using the same login as for worship. And the sole purpose of the meeting is to consider a motion to give funds from two special funding sources of the church, totaling just under $16,000, to Grace Preschool so that they can pay the former director's back pay. If you have any questions, please reach out to pastor or to a member of council. We still need lawn care volunteers. And if you have donations for children's book ministries, please place donations on the bottom rack of the shopping cart in the narthex. Other than announcing the hymn lotto, does anybody have anything? Any, anything on Facebook? Anything? in the pews. Rebecca, you see anything in Facebook chat? Nope. Going once, going twice. So our singing hymn today um, is number 685, Take My Life That I May Be. Six 685 eight. in your ELWs, Take My Life That I May Be. Please stand and body your spirit.
in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, I, I, and I even heard you say that everyone's 